afternoon, everyone. I'm here with Beardy McBeardface, and uh, we're here to have a little chat to uh, to yourself, uh, John, about, um, I suppose, two things. One is you've got a shiny new i3. Yes, indeed. Um, so that's really good. And also, um, I suppose, not necessarily your unique situation, but a situation you've got that led you to having an i3 and how that's made things easier. Yeah. So... Um, you know, we've known each other for a little while now. Certainly, yeah. It's um, I, th on a bit. I think you're probably my first subscriber, which That's is right. which is fantastic. Um, and I wanted to, I suppose, touch on today uh, the fact that I know you've got some mobility issues and how that has, I suppose, incorporated you getting an EV. Yep. And um, how that's made things, hopefully, made things easier. Yep. So tell us what car you had before this i3. What what kind of what was you driving before now? I had a really horrible, dirty diesel. Oh. Had a, uh, a VW Caddy. Yeah. Um, which was what's known as a WAV, or a wheel wheelchair access vehicle. So I had a ramp in the back. Right. So that I could get my mobility scooter into it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what I had before the i3. Excellent. Tell us tell us a little bit more about, I suppose, uh, your your EV EV journey to now. So before you before you even, I suppose, got to the i3. Yeah. Um, what what got you interested in EVs in general and electric cars and all that good stuff? Well, I really like watching the Gadget Show, and uh, I was watching the Gadget Show one week, and uh, Craig Charles was interviewing the uh, the great Robert Llewellyn. Ah, excellent. And uh, Craig said to him and asked him about his how was his YouTube channel going, and they mentioned fully charged. So I thought, well, I really like Robert Llewellyn. I'll have a look at this, um, and I'd had a bit of an inkling, a little bit of knowledge about electric vehicles beforehand. And um, I watched, I don't know, half a dozen of the back episodes of Fully Charged. I was absolutely hooked. I was, you know, next car, if I can, will be electric. Um, I got involved in the community yep. on Twitter. For some reason, people like chatting to me on Twitter and my sort of popularity <laughs> grew um, to the extent that I met Robert last week at a Fully Charged briefing. And the guy I was with introduced himself and he went to introduce me and he went, oh, Beady McVeer face, I know who you are. Uh, but even before I had to say who I was. Infamous. So, the infamous, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how I sort of started with electric cars. Um, Love the community, really enjoy that and the, the sort of banter. And I decided, like with everything I do, I would get into it in depth. So I decided to read watch videos and learn as much as I could about electric vehicles to the, the point now well I suppose I'm an EV evangelist. Excellent, excellent and rightly so as well. I think. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, so I suppose you know one of the, the focuses on, on this particular one which was really interesting to me and I've I've seen a, a couple of people certainly a fully charged uh, last year that came up to me with similar kind of I suppose mobility concerns before getting an EV that they they couldn't get particular types of cars or they weren't easy to get into so uh, if you don't mind would you mind sort of going through maybe what your mobility yeah concerns or issues are which you know kind of led you to hopefully you know, making it a bit easier well um up until 2013 i was a commercial boat skipper and i ran my own boat business um primarily running a sea safari business i'd had arthritis for about 20 years before that but it was just mild it was just in my hands and in my wrists and in the space of six months I went from being jumping around on boats to being virtually immobile not being able to sort of bend down to pick stuff up off the deck mm. I couldn't hang on to the handrails properly um, so I went and saw the GP did a load of tests and the GP said you know your arthritis has got really really bad if you continue bouncing around on boats you're going to probably end up in a wheelchair permanently right okay um so with a few other issues that i've had including having to have a triple heart bypass and an amputation of some toes on my foot um it sort of restricts my mobility quite a lot yeah um so the other problem is when you have a heart bypass they try they tell you to exercise as much as possible the problem with having arthritis is you can't actually exercise much yeah, yeah, of course. so it becomes a bit of a vicious circle really um so i can walk around a little bit with the aid of a stick but if i'm going to be having to walk anywhere of any sort of distance more than probably 20 meters or so 
then I'd have to use my mobility scooter. Mm -hmm. And we invested in a smaller mobility scooter, which actually comes apart into five bits and actually fits quite neatly into the boot of the car. Excellent. Uh, that's good. So I suppose moving nicely on onto the car, um, we are now sitting in your nice BMW i3. Yeah, which desperately needs a clean. <laughs> Mine too, so I won't worry <laughs> too much. Um, so what, what led you to the i3 in particular, um, out of anything else really, on the EV market? Um, being disabled um, and what they class as the high rate mobility, so I have quite serious mobility issues. Um, I can give back part of my benefits that I get and I can get a lease car through Motability. Hmm. Um, and I spent a lot of time on Motability knowing that the caddy was due to come up for change, looking at what I wanted, and I desperately wanted an electric vehicle. The problem was that Motability at the time only had two cars, and it was either, the, well actually three cars, it was the Zoe, yeah. or it was the two smart cars, so the Smart for two and the Smart for four uh, EQs. Hmm. Um, I, was, I looked at the Smart 44 and it was just too small. It right. just wasn't big enough. I mean, t to be fair, it's not a lot smaller than the i3, but I think BMW did manage the space better. Yeah. Um, and then there was the Zoe, and the Zoe actually would have been quite good, but what happens with motability is you have an upfront payment that you have to pay. Right, okay. And depending on the car, depends on what the upfront payment was. And the upfront payment for a Renault Zoe is £4,000. And we just haven't got that sort of money. Yeah, sure. Um, when I first became disabled and we were applying for benefits, there was a bit of a fight, bun fight. And we sort of burnt through our savings quite quickly. Mm. And then once you end up being on benefits, you don't be a, you're not able to you know put much savings by. So generating £4,000 to put down as a down payment, effectively. It's a lot. And you don't get it back. No. So it's just you know, money, money gone. Yeah, burn money, isn't um, it? And then with Motability, they change their car stock every quarter. So I was just, every three months I was looking at their car stock to see what was coming up as yeah. we were getting closer to changeover. And the quarter before, they put the BMW i3 on. Oh, excellent. And the i3 was actually just under £2,000 upfront oh. costs, which is much more achievable yes, yeah, than £4,000. So we went out, we test drove the BMW, um, really liked it, um, went to fully charge, test drove it again around the racetrack, <laughs> yeah, and uh, again, we was really happy with it, because I need a certain height of seating position, Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. because of my mobility issues, so if the car's too low, and my legs are too far flat out in front of me, I actually start to get back pain quite quickly, so I could get the seating at the right height, I could adjust the steering wheel, and it had ample mileage for what I wanted, so that's where we, in, we ended up with the BMW. Excellent. And um, so now now that you've, I suppose, you've driven it for a, a number of months now, um, how, has, how has maybe the i3 specifically helped you in terms of your mobility and, and I suppose, changing where you can get to and how you can get there? What, what's, what's been the biggest benefit of, of getting a, not just an electric car, but maybe the i3 specifically? Particularly an electric car means that I can leave home every day with full charge. Hmm. Um, so I don't have to go into petrol stations, get out of the car, and you've got all the getting up, getting down, plugging in, dirty diesel hands, and all that <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. Um, so with the person with mobility, not you can get in the car, go to where I want to go, say up to 150 miles away, which we don't do any further than that very often, mm. and I can get to the destination, get out of the car, and that's it. And most cases I can get back in the car and drive home, and I've still got enough juice in the battery. Um, and the BMW, again, because of the, he the height of the seating position, some of the features on the BMW, like the advanced cruise control, yep, yep. I really like that. Um, and it's also much easier to drive in the fact that you just put it in drive and away you go. Yeah, because these are now obviously, like, like mine, the same as yours, is that the gears are on the steering wheel yeah, rather exactly. than down further down. There's no, there's no, like we used to drive, like manual gears yep. and things like that. It's it's all kind of been taken care of. Excellent, excellent. And um, so um, tell us tell us what kind of spec you got. Um, what what was what's the make model on that? Sort of so thing? the BMW is the i3. It's the 120. Um, I decided not to go for the S because I found the suspension was too hard in the S. Mm. And actually, I find that was um, becoming was quite uncomfortable. Yeah. The other thing about the BMW, which is really nice is because it's the iDrive system and it's not a touchscreen, 
I haven't got to try and lean into the touch screen and, yep. and move around. And again, with my hands, sometimes it can be quite difficult. Having the rotary control down here for the iDrive, I actually find much easier. Yeah. So yeah, they, they do theirs in ampage, which is completely different to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. So it's 120 amp hour, which works out to about 38 and a bit uh, kilowatt hour battery. Mm. Take me through the um, your kind of pickup and purchase experience because you know as well as I do we, we we read everything on Twitter and things like that about people had this horror story and that yeah. horror story what was what was it like buying this in particular for you actually it was one of the best buying experiences of anything I've ever bought in my really? life yeah we uh, dealt with uh, BMW Barrett's in Canterbury mm -hmm. and the chap in there Nigel was absolutely first class he was so helpful excellent um, he dealt with motability, filled in all the paperwork, did all the application forms, etc. That's supposed to, that you fill in when you get a car with motability. So he did everything for us. Brilliant. And then literally we turned up on the day. Um, the car was covered in a white, in a dust black dust sheet, and he did like the presentation, pulled Very the cover nice. off. Very nice. Um, in a special space that they have at Barrett's, um, he they he shows you around part of the car. And then one of their techies comes out and shows you through all the the techie stuff and the the, uh, the features on the car, and away you go. Excellent. Because that was the only other thing that we had added to the car, which was non-standard, and that was the advanced cruise control. Yeah. Um. Because one of the big bugbears about the caddy when we had it is it didn't have cruise control, and I actually really like cruise control when we're on a motorway or on a dual carriageway, and I do use the advanced cruise control in this a lot. It's a really nice feature. Yeah, I was using that on the way down here, and to be honest, I'm always a bit hesitant, but um, actually, it just works. You know, yeah. it's 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 not a it's not a Tesla type thing, but you know, it it, it does the job, and what it does, it does well. Yeah, and it's you can set up the distance <clears throat> that you want to be from the car in front, and if the car in front starts to break, your car starts to break automatically. So it gives you that extra feeling of you know security yeah. the other thing is that look you know obviously we, we we both always get asked is like real world range against yeah. what you know the manufacturers yeah. say so manufacturers for this one what do they rec reckon it's quite high isn't it i think it's, it's about 190 isn't one, it? 190 to 200, 200 sort of yeah. miles now what uh what do you see that you'll get in real well, world most of my driving is obviously because we've got it in september has been the colder months of the year yes yeah, so a real I, world yeah a real world <laughs> i think i'm hitting about 150 on average so that's pretty pretty good actually yeah, considering and i'm getting about 3.6 <laughs> kilowatts per mile good yeah so uh, that's on a reasonable run. so yeah it, you know it's, it's working well in terms of um have you obviously you charge at home yep um but presumably you've charged public using yep. the BMW, any problems, any issues? No, again, because I don't do a lot of long, long journeys there, you know, we, we've had the ecotricity issues that everybody else has had. Yeah. You turn up and the pump doesn't work. Um, but I do try where possible to use Engini. Yeah. Um, I find them so reliable, easy to use, and the fact that it's contactless payment, I haven't got to worry about having lots of different cards or dongles. Just swipe and go type of thing. Just swipe and we, go. Before we wrap up then, any <clears throat> any planned trips that you tend to do? Now you've got the i3 and you've got the range. Um, what what are you planning to do uh, with it? You know, well, we primarily use it for sort of driving around town, going shopping, going to hospital and doctor's appointments and stuff like that. I'm doing a lot more of coming to the car events, mm. uh, the EV group events, um, which is really good, and I'm quite happy to come and do those. Because again, like everybody says, it's just a more relaxing experience driving yep. an electric car um, rather than a clunky old dirty diesel. <laughs> um, and I don't know why. I can't put my finger on why mm. you feel more relaxed driving an electric car. So yeah, I'm going to try and do a, a, a few more. As, you know, at the moment we're down at the Sussex EV meet. Yep. I want to try and do a few more of those and probably go a bit further afield. You'll be driving this down to fully charged? Yeah, yep. I went down to Farnborough in it last week for the fully charged briefing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I should be taking it down there. Fantastic. Okay, well, um, thanks very much, John. I really no, appreciate no it, Simon. and um, hopefully you'll enjoy more and more driving on your i3. That's the plan. Brilliant. Thank thanks you very much. Cheers. Cheers.